Alright everybody, um, so we are on our way to uh, Bright Brightling today um, on our way to talk about Mad Jack Fuller or Honest Jack or uh, John Fuller that's right isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Um, and he was an extremely interesting character very very eccentric hence why he got his name Mad Jack because he was a little bit of a lager lout a little bit of a Jack the Lad I guess you could probably say and probably why the name Jack as well um, what we've got to do today is we're going around to see a few follies today that he designed and they're all around Brightling area and um, we're gonna have a lot of fun today and I'm, I'm accompanied by my friend of almost 10 years now which defies belief Emma so say hello Em oh, hey. there you go and uh, she's an artist by trade and I'm gonna put down her link for a website uh, down below as well so you can, guys can check her stuff out as well because she's amazingly talented Bless anyway you. oh that's right yeah me too <laughs> um so yeah uh what we're going to talk about so yeah we're going to go to these four four follies there's two that we aren't going to be able to do one because it's on private land and then another because of um just sheer because of actually the fact of that we can't actually get to it um and before I do anything else, we've literally just driven past the pub, which we're going to do. Uh, and then um, we're going to take you out for a lovely little tour. So I'm just going to park up here for a second. And yeah, hopefully you all enjoy it. He died at a lovely age of 77, which is old considering at the time. And uh, yeah, like I said, we're going to take you to these really cool places. So where's it? Sugarloaf, the Hermit's Tower, Hermit's Tower the Pyramid, the Obelisk pyramid uh, and uh, he's yeah and obviously yeah his tomb at pyramids type of thing so we can take you to all those first off we're gonna go to the pub just because the um, priorities first it's just a shame the pub isn't going anymore um, but it's actually the mad jack for the pub it's called jack for the pub isn't it yeah yeah, yeah it's called jack for the pub and uh, contrary to belief I'm actually in East Sussex for a change so if you want to do this I thoroughly encourage you to go about and do this tour with us. Oh, quickly, um, show them your hip hop here. Right, show. We're using a really cool crayon map. That's right, a crayon map. Believe this the truth. Original handmade. Handmade crayon map. With um, tiny zoom in. illustrations. <laughs> with a red crayon. <laughs> it's cool, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. You can you can tell you're an artist. That's it. Yeah. See. See, it's really cool. Is it like screw sat navs and screw you know, like internet. Who needs that when you've got a crayon Who map to go for where this, we need to go this to? Is the way it forward. is very cool. It is the way forward. So uh, please, please, please come do this journey with us. Um, we really hope you enjoy it. Uh, it's been a gorgeous day so far, and we've only just started technically. So uh, enjoy it. Right here we go. See you later, guys. Bye. Bye. So yeah, this is um, Jack Fuller's pub, but it's not going anymore, and it's somebody's house. So uh, yeah, we have to be careful what we film, but it's pretty cool. Shame it's not going anymore, because it would have been great to end off the journey with, or to start with, doesn't matter who Matt is it? Yeah. But here we go, yeah, so yeah. Right, so we're at the uh, obelisk of uh, Mad Jack Fuller, one of the other follies that we're doing today. And uh, it's to uh, dedicate to the, apparently it's meant to be uh, part of the memorial for even the Napoleonic War or uh, the Battle of Trafalgar, but nobody actually really knows. And to be honest, it may not even be a commemoration for any of it. In fact, I can even say the word commemoration without sort of like sounding uh, a bit stupid, it's pretty funny. Um, but it's huge, and we're on a 360 view all the way around which uh, is amazing so yeah apart from uh, 
Oh yeah, and if you look across over there, which is where it's facing now, that's the observatory, which is kind of cool as well. Unfortunately, we're not going to go to that because it's, uh, it's a public house. But apart from that, you just pan around and it's like amazing. So yeah, so this is, uh, we're going to, like I said, uh, as you probably know, we're going to do a few more of the, well, we're going to do as many as we can today, Folly Wise of his, because he's just such a fascinating character, and I'll probably use that word a lot today. Um, and he's just so beautiful. And the fact of, like, there is a really cool, like, sundial effect that's really cool on this. Maybe we were thinking that's maybe what we theorised is. It may be just a massive sundial. Not actually. Right, what we're going to do then is we're just going to film a few more bits around it. Not really that much to say apart from how amazing it is, but um, we're just going to film a few more bits. And it's surrounded by a ditch as well, which is really cool. It just goes right the way around. So we are uh, standing in the Sugarloaf, uh, which is really, really cool. And uh, it's just, I don't really know how to describe it. It just looks like some massive concrete teepee, to be fair. And the fact you actually can go in it, yeah, it's fully, it's, just, it's, it's basically a cone, like a cornetto, but upside down. And uh, yeah, basically, apparently, uh, yeah, apparently somebody actually lived in here like a hermit or something and uh, so there's obviously windows that are naturally here and then like we reckon there could have been a fireplace and uh, it's weird because I'm talking to you from inside it but it's quite cavernous it's lovely it's really amazing and then the view imagine this like looking at here what a view like incredible view you've had just just amazing and the sheep must have been noisy though but how cool is this? So yeah, I mean like, again, it's just like just a brilliant, brilliant place. Like, not really much to say about it, but again, it's testament to uh, Mad Jack's sort of work, really, I guess you could sort of say. And his inspiration and like his, you know, his design is just, just, I don't know, it's just so different and so cool. Uh, and it's just so quirky. The fact that we've literally, we, we're driving around these places and you can actually just literally almost go from one to the other. And actually location-wise, it's fairly easy to get to these. We haven't really had trouble actually finding these. I mean, most of them are just like, like this. They're just huge and tall. You can't not sort of see them, but just amazing places to be at. So what we're going to do is we're going to probably film a bit outside when we do it. And then, uh, like I said, just, as always, I've like, got to keep checking the place out. It's just so, so cool.
Oh yeah, um, actually, yeah, I completely forgot. Yeah, so the reason why it's called Sugar Life is because um, it was what sugar used to come in. So it used to come in loads, and the loads were literally the uptimed, uh, like cornettos, conal shapes. And so this was literally a bigger version of it. Obviously not made of sugar, though, because that would have been hilarious. Uh, it would have just melted in the summer, wouldn't it? Uh, but yeah, so that's why they call it Sugar Life, because it was literally like just a, a sculpture of that. Again, really weird, why would you do that? But again, why wouldn't you, when you look at how amazing it looks? And wouldn't you like to live here? I know I would. I might still do that, actually. When I run away, when everything goes wrong in my life, I may just knock down a few places and just put a hand in things. Just like, it's just so cool. But yeah, cool.
We're at the Hermit's Tower. I was so going to say Hobbit, Hobbit's Tower then. Uh, which was um, built again, designed by uh, Mad Jack. And uh, he, uh, this was because of, this folly was designed because of Bodium Castle that he inherited. Well, not inherited, he, he bought. And um, he was designing, he was redesigning Bodium or rebuilding it, can we say? And uh, this is basically a folly to basically sort of uh, say that it was being constructed, which is kind of a weird one. You build like another tower just to sort of say that the current castle that you're building is like a bit of a showy offy type thing. I think more money than sense, uh, probably the right idea to sort of say. It's absolutely magical around here. Um, we've been here before, we, we had like a mini scout out thing, and uh, we're quite aware of it. And there's a sheep trying to wrestle its way out of. Always a magical moment. So yeah, when you do come down here, you will probably see sheep scratching their bums against wooden posts, like you'll see there, which is always a magical sight, you'll see. Uh, <laughs> good old East Sussex. So really, uh, our last stop on the tour is exactly over there. If you can see there's a church, which is Thomas the Beckett's church. And uh, we're going to go to that. That's going to be our last stop. Oh. So um, we're at Thomas the Beckett Church and uh, it's really important because of Mad Jack, not only because he was buried here but obviously because the walls and the um, iron gates and everything else and this huge wall that's sort of surrounds him, it goes right the way around. Um, he actually employed uh, people from the Napoleonic War 
once that all came to an end and he'd actually employed them to work for him to build it so they wouldn't get out of pocket so contrary to what people believe about him obviously being a fan of slave trade and everything else in his family owning Jamaican plantations that actually there was a lot of good that he came out of doing what he did and obviously if it wasn't for that we wouldn't be doing this journey that we've done today um, and we wouldn't be around at such a beautiful location in East Sussex contrary to everybody that's watching because I know I do all my Kent stuff and I've come across the border so yes I've travelled for once but it's been well worth it um, so cool, right, we'll chat more about it anyway, we've got a couple more things to do, we'll go from there. See you later guys. So, can you please tell me about this magical uh, pyramid slash crypt? Okay, so we're at Bad Jack Fuller's pyramid in Brightling Church, where he is entombed. Um, legend has it is that he had himself buried at a dinner table with a flag, a flagon of wine, and loads of roast dinners and stuff like that, with um, glass on the floor to stop the devil from catching his soul. But sadly, when they sort of dug him up for research purposes, they found no such thing to be true. But in our minds, and in our hearts, it's still true. See, it pays to have a tour guide with you. Do you know what I mean? Especially one that's free. It's really cool. This is amazing. There we go. Wave. <laughs>